Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Monday night, October 2nd, 2023, about 11.06 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity shows a 2.3 earthquake over here in Puerto Rico and also a 1.0 up along the West Coast. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the globe. Uh, as we're looking at the movement across Japan, it looks like this has halted slightly. Uh, we were watching some uh, deeper activity here into the Izu Trench with some surface activity, but the last one in this region, 4.6. So, kind of keeping an eye on this area. Uh, a little bit further up north along the plate boundary itself, around the Kurokamachaka, getting some movement as well. Earlier this afternoon, we've seen a 4.6. And uh, let's head over to the west coast here. See what we got going on out here in the Gorda Ridges. 2.8 coming in earlier this evening, just about a couple hours ago. That's just shy of the Cascadia subduction zone. Still got some movement going on up at Mount St. Helens. Although most of this activity looks like it is uh, from earlier this morning. And I'm sure there's a couple other earthquakes in there that uh, have not been included on the events, on the event map up here. Uh, Northern California, a little spotty out here. Of course, the Clear Lake Volcanic Field around the Cobb Mountain region of Northern California continue to see activity there with the uh, hydrothermal plants in full swing. One earthquake outside of the San Jose region, a 1.9, just off of the plate boundary here. And Southern California, got a handful of earthquakes down here, but nothing major. No major swarms, uh, no major unusual activity to take note of there. Yellowstone National Park. Looks like we got about 10 earthquakes or so uh, of a little swarm maybe or, uh, earlier this afternoon. Let's go ahead and check that out on the Yellowstone overview map here and see what we have. A lot of these are missing. We'll go back to the previous day. I think this. Well, it looks like some of these are. Uh, when is this from? The date's kind of cut off there, so I think this is, uh, we're going to have to wait until maybe tomorrow to see the uh, data. Not really seeing it show up too much here. Uh, it looks like some of the activity is in the mix of this uh, wind movement earlier. We'll, we'll check back here at the end of this update and see if they've uh, included those in the... Uh, on the little map, but uh, it looks like some small earthquake activity occurring here outside of the uh, West Yellowstone region earlier this afternoon. Handful of smaller quakes. Uh, as far as the rest of the country goes, pretty quiet for the most part. Uh, movement down in South America looks a little spotty as well. Uh, one 4.4 in the Chile area, relatively shallow at about 23 kilometers deep or so in that area. Uh, most of the movement today has been focused earlier this morning around the Izu Trench and now we're getting in that uh, didn't I mention that earlier <laughs> in my update to watch this middle point here between these two earthquakes uh, and look it filled right in as expected let me go back over here to the uh, map uh, as we zoom in here to this area looks like we got a 4.2 filling in slightly in between these active regions although this is off of the plate boundary uh, let me see if there's something else going on here. Looks like maybe there was a, another earthquake in that mix. Looks like a five-pointer, uh, but USGS not showing that, so hard to say uh, what's going on. But it looks like a little bit of activity stirring up here across this plate boundary that had a little seismic gap here and uh, filled in. Also around the Sumatra area, quite a few threes kicking off here in a little cluster. Uh, USGS only showing one earthquake here, but it looks like there's definitely a lot more uh, stirring up there in that area. We'll keep an eye on that region. Right now, the quiet zone across the board over here would be uh, basically up towards the Myanmar region, southward into the Andaman Sea. Uh, so that's going to be this area right here. All right, uh, what else we got here across the region? Deeper movement quakes occurring right now near Papua New Guinea at... Uh, Looks like it's in a portion of the trench zone out here near the Solomon Sea, but inland. 5.7 from earlier 
uh, this evening. Also a 4.7 in that mix as well, just around the Papua New Guinea area. Um, both of these look fairly deep for that region. I haven't really seen too much back building across this area uh, today, but as we have seen in the past couple days, it's been bouncing back and forth here of uh, deeper movement and then shallower earthquake activity out here, but we can kind of watch that region, see what happens. All right, further down south, uh, looks like a little bit of activity. 4.4, Kermadec Trench earlier this afternoon, pretty deep. And uh, wow, USGS reporting a 3.4 for the uh, North Island, New Zealand area, just outside the Wellington region, 17 kilometers deep here. Go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers real quick. Get the most recent information here from their site. Uh, looks like a handful of earthquakes over here on this map. These are, uh, let me go over here to the earthquake specific map here real quick and see what we got. An hour ago, 2.6, 2.9, two hours ago, 2.9. It looks like there's some type of swarm going on off, off here. Uh, with specifically within this area of New Zealand, just kind of hard to tell if it's offshore or what, but uh, these last earthquakes there shows like some type of swarm occurring within that region of the North Island area. Let's see what we got here. Looks like it is showing up uh, for the most part, maybe on this station here. Nothing big, but uh, looks like a little swarm kicking up here. South Island uh, still seeing some activity down here. Looks like this has increased in the last 24 hours. This is where that six pointer struck, uh, well, I think over a week ago now. Still seeing some aftershock activity. It was quiet for a little bit, but it looks like we're noticing some uh, plate tecton uh, tectonic stress down there uh, building things up. So keep an eye on New Zealand. Just going to catch or check out the drums here real quick, see if we've got anything sp uh, specific here to note. Doesn't look like it for now. All right, uh, the rest of the world here. Oh, what do we got coming into Texas right now? Three pointer. Texas uh, never lets me down, right? It's always got some type of activity out there, whether it's weather or earthquakes. This three pointer occurring out in the oil fields out here outside of Snyder, Texas. Uh, up into the Alaska area, still seeing some movement up there. A little bit of activity across the Aleutian Trench of 4.2, uh, that earthquake early this morning. So for now, um, you know, looking at what we got here, another 4.4 coming in to the um, New Guinea area, stretching over towards the uh, Indonesia Islands region. Definitely seeing a pretty good cluster across this area. Older movement quakes back up here. Uh, but it looks as though we want to, or at least this, uh, this beautiful world we live on, wants to uh, create the tension up here across the Java Trench and uh, potentially back building here across the Papua New Guinea region. It is quiet here across the Fiji area for now, but we have seen some deeper movement quakes here in the last couple days uh, that has uh, allowed for quite a bit of stress to ramp up across this plate boundary. Uh, but we'll keep an eye. A lot of times we'll see forward advancing movement uh, on, a, on a large scale, similar to what we're seeing right now. And then it will back feed, back build here across the plate boundary. So keep an eye for some uh, deeper, maybe some larger scale activity here across Fiji. And New Zealand's definitely getting in on the mix as well uh, with that uptick in the aftershock department there around South Island. Keep an eye on this area. All right, uh, see what else. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet for the most part. Mediterranean, a couple threes and some twos out there. Let's check out space weather. We forgot to check that out this morning here. Uh, oh man, look at this feature. That is a broad region of a, a filament right there that could blast off. Oh, I'll have to keep an eye on that. It's really not associated with any solar flares but uh goodness that is a beautiful large area that we'll have to keep an eye on uh, a lot of times these things shoot off the uh shoot off this 
beautiful feature in the space and uh, it is almost directly facing Earth. Goodness, the sun looks absolutely beautiful right now. It's beautiful features. Um, so let's see what we have here. Kevin Filament here. He's actually mentioning it. Uh, greetings. Uh, solar activity so far on Monday has been at mo moderate levels. A very large filament stretching from the sun's southern hemisphere into the northeast quadrant is currently front and center. It remains magnetically anchored in place for now. However, should it collapse, a noteworthy coronal mass ejection would be very likely, and that would be directly at Earth. So we'll continue to watch that uh, filament there that's stretching across a good portion of the sun in Earth-directed view. A current threat level for solar flares now, 99% chance, 45 for the M flare and X flare remains at about 5% chance. Let's look at these magnetograms, see what we have here. Uh, that solar filament sits right about here, not really associated with any um, solar flares. Far as uh, the, well, I mean solar sunspots, far as the sunspots go, the ones that are facing us, well, they are looking fairly stable. That's about all I can say about them. They're really not looking uh, promising at all for any major flaring. In fact, this region over here has dwindled quite a bit. But we'll watch this little center core here. It looks like there's a little bit of uh, uh, complexity around this center portion. But I, again, I don't think there's too much to worry about in terms of the solar flare activity. The main threat right now is going to be this uh, beautiful filament that could... Uh, create some interesting weather, uh, space weather if that uh, decides to um, blast off from the uh, from the area of the sun or directed for sure you can see on this image here a little bit as well all right uh, what else we got uh, nothing major heading our way for now uh, not a whole lot of auroras popping up here either very minimal chances all right far as the uh, weather potential out here well, I think they're uh, getting some much-needed rainfall out here across portions of the southern plains, stretching all the way up into the northern plains up there around North, uh, South Dakota and North Dakota. And uh, that's bringing with it some severe weather threat. Let's go ahead and check out the long-range models here. Uh, that's all due to, well, you got this cold pressure or low pressure here, trough, uh, interacting with the warm, moist air, creating that uh, thunderstorm activity. And that low pressure here is going to bring quite a bit of cooler weather, chilly weather out there across a portion of the eastern states. And I think that's well deserved. They have been cooking out there underneath the influence of high pressure for quite a while. So looking at that, it kind of scoots out of the way. Um, really no major setup as we enter into the middle of, of October. Uh, but we'll continue to watch these patterns and see... Uh, how they play out looking at the um, area of the North American plate or the North American continent region does show that massive uh, low pressure up here towards the second week of October that is uh, quite impressive as that will be bring in probably some uh, rainfall and snow into the Pacific Northwest doesn't look like I see any major high pressure ridges out here for the west coast just basically around the uh, portions of Canada for now it uh, looks like that high pressure system wants to uh, position itself right in that area all right folks I'm going to jump off here um, hope everyone has a good night uh, please stay safe out there right now seismograph stations uh, pretty quiet Hawaii uh, let's see, we really haven't checked out Hawaii here as far as earthquake activity goes. Fairly minimal, a couple small quakes around the Pahala area. Uh, I don't think we got anything major to chat about there across Kilauea Volcano. Still sitting at a uh, yellow and advisory, but that's, uh, that's what it's been out at here for a little bit. Uh, as far as the cams go, not a whole lot going on far as uh, any type of lighting up of the lava lake area the tilt meters out here would give us a good indicator if something's building out here 
Uh, but uh, let's see if I can get that real quick. I'm still not back to myself 100%. I'm getting there, but I'm sure you guys can still hear it in my voice. I'm luckily, uh, lucky I've lasted this long. A little bit of tilt here over the last two days, but there's, it's just this up and down pattern. There really hasn't been any major, major uptick in the tilt meters here. Just a gradual increasing uh, and then sometimes leveling off here of uh, tilt across the Kilauea volcano, which is expected once a volcano, you know, ceases to erupt. You do get buildup uh, of potential magma and whatnot below. But I'm, I'm really not seeing any major earthquake activity, no, no major swarms, really nothing that would imply that this thing is recharging quickly. Uh, if anything, it's slowly, and we're still seeing some gases down there, volcanic gases, uh, in the daytime that kind of seep up through the uh, through some of the cracks there at the lava lake area up around the summit. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have a good night. Stay safe. And by the way, I did not get a chance to melt off the prizes for the uh, winners of the 100,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, I've just been down most of the day. Um, I will get those off tomorrow. And again, um, when I do, I will provide those winners with the tracking number as I promised. So hopefully tomorrow we'll get those off. I'm going to try to venture outside here. I know fresh air is good when you're sick, but uh, I've just been pretty much lounging all day being lazy. I'm just trying to get over this cold I've picked up out of the blue. All right. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime. Peace out.